Am I close enough to the mic? You happy with that volume there? Lovely. And okay. we're live. <laughs> awesome. Well, good evening, Dice Rollers. For the second half of <clears throat> Simply Second Edition with my lovely game or my attempt at a lovely game. We'll see. I always grade that on how many people are still alive at the end of it. So <laughs> tonight we're doing seeing how well your own personal world can be converted into a Pathfinder game with the rules they give you out of the first two books. So the bestiary and the player's guide. And that's where we're sitting right now is going to be my lovely little world continent. Um, and who are you, sir? I am Jared, the sometimes intern, sometimes kick in the ass, um, <laughs> who has been around here for a little bit. I'm the idiot who decided to send them an email and hope that I got something back. And when I did, I didn't know what to do with it. So here I am. We asked him to be his intern. Now he's jamming shows and is co-hosting tonight's episode of Simply Second Edition. So Jared Mercer, no relation. Do you relate to Matt Mercer? You can't prove otherwise. There's been no, no, there's been no calls from his not. lawyer. Okay. Um, tonight Jared's going to show us how easy it is to, to take a homebrew setting. Check out this awesome map he's got up here he made himself. Apparently Hex is 50 miles. Is that right? Ooh. Yes, that's what I'm going with right now. That is okay. still variable. So you bought the core handbook, but everyone is is running, you know, the fall plague stone. And you don't feel like yes. getting into a huge campaign, Age of Ashes, everybody else. What are you gonna do? Well, Jared has a home brew, home written world himself. So think back to 3.5. And everyone's playing Forgotten Rounds, maybe some Dragonlance, and then they came out with Eberron. Here's a completely alternate verse world, but you're using the same rule set. So here tonight on Simply Second Edition, we're going to use our original characters mostly that we were playing under Rob and myself in episodes one and two, and we're gonna convert them as if they were born and bred with lore and race and everything right here in Jared's world. Um, so I'd like to thank Jared uh, from Pen and Dragon Games for uh, you know putting in the effort and the time to actually bring this forth instead of just being our intern and being one of our auxiliary players. Now the spotlight is on you. So Jared, where would you want to start? Well, we start with some history um, and hopefully help you round out your character so you feel like you're playing your game, or in my case, my game. Um, so with that, we go to what they already provide you in the player's guide, which is a option for half races. And that is in case you got tired of the simple half elf and half orc and you wanted to try something different pazio has graciously told you in the side goblin that if you want to make something else out of a half dwarf uh here's how you do it and so that is where we're going to start since the place you all are starting in is a sanctuary that has not touched the outside world in six centuries and so there's been a lot of inbreeding in a way. And so the generic races aren't so much available to you. So note here on Fantasy Grounds, thank you to, so much for our sponsor for providing us with the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rules for free. We are ever, ever, ever so grateful. And we're, well, we've got several shows now. We've got our Age of Ashes show where we're running with these rules. We're running the Age of Ashes, also supplied and sponsored by Fantasy Grounds. We're doing a little bit of a one shot on Sunday nights right here on Twitch TV at the GM's Cut, where we are trying our own things out. And soon in October, soon to launch with a little bit of extra help, red shirts from the guys over at Starship and Pella, Starfinder podcast. Rob Hammond is in the house tonight and will be launching frequency of screams what we're going to call static fear this october using the starfinder tabletop rpg set for fantasy grounds but right now gentlemen if i would remind you to click on your characters click at the bottom of the library sorry the very bottom of the library tab click on modules and make sure that you have the pathfinder second edition core rules loaded <laughs> manually yourself or you will not have access Because as you were saying, they are, they are 
available to you. I just double checked to make sure I didn't mess up on my end. So they are there. Yep. Uh, and for those of you at home who actually like a book, like myself, it is on page 55 is the rules that we are uh, looking over. Oh, we can do that. I think we can do that too. Yeah. Let's all go. Just to a little that. blurb at the bottom of the page talking about how you go about making other half races. Um, so. Can we have our uh, co-host, uh, Joe Gibson, uh, chime in? Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I was just uh, waiting for some space there. Okay. Clearing my throat. Sorry. What page That's are we on? Uh, page 55. What's, what section is that? Ancestries and backgrounds. Got it. Ta -da. Ta -da -da. Yes. So my question is going to be for I am playing a goblin. So to make a half goblin. Right. Which would be the best route to take for that? Oh, Mr. Joe. Well, according to the book, you're going to do a half anything, can't you? Yeah, basically. So you would just take the basic stats for the human, and instead of grabbing the, like if you're a half elf, they give you half elf racial feats or. Um, you get to uh, pick from both lists. Uh, heritage feats, because that's what they label them now, heritage feats. Yes. So you would still get the human access to the human heritage feats and the goblin heritage feats since there isn't any half goblin heritage feats yet um, due to come in future expanses on my own but for right now we're trying to keep it as bare minimum as possible on changes just to see how clean the numbers actually work out wasn't there something specifically in here that talked about home brewing races i don't see it where it encouraged you to like pick your own halfy race, be a half something, half dwarf, half, you know, isn't that in here in the core book somewhere? I, I don't think, remember seeing that. I think it's Trying just to the find it. Oh, Matt mentioned it. He's like, oh, look at this. And you could, with the new rules, you could totally make yourself a half dwarf. So I'm, I'm assuming they mentioned, you know, something. Uh, oh, here we go. Bottom page of 55 on the right, little side note. By default, half elves and half orc descent by humans. Your GM might allow you to be the offspring of an elf, an orc, or a different ancestry. In these cases, the GM will let you select half elf or half orc heritage as the heritage for this other ancestry. The most likely other parent of a half elf are gnomes, halflings, and the most likely of a half orc are goblins, Joe, halflings, mm. and dwarves. Not to uh, throw too much information at you here at the get go. So what I was, what I'm doing with my own little game here is, based on which race you choose to be half of, you will have a, you'll be treated as a bloodline. That would be kind of your your subclass. So anything that could be related to the Fey are Fey blooded. Anything that can be related to goblins or orcs are um, green bloods, and gnomes and dwarves are considered stone-blooded so if we were actually playing in oh really so because of all the gnome face stuff that's in here we're discounting that yes we are okay. you're going with the burrow gnome ground gnome yes i'm going with old school yep you know no it's fine just just be sure because i am the gnome right right so, so you, you Yes. So I'll take half elf because it says our gnomes, and then that makes me stone blooded. Yes. It, it, this will come more in <clears throat> effect if we ever go and actually play in the city. <clears throat> okay. Um, because that's where the divisions are really noticeable. So this there's in the city, and then there's everything outside the city they're kind of com two completely different playing areas if you will okay so how do you take a half elf in ancestries they only have human here 
it's an it's a feat. Okay. Yeah. So I go into human. Right? Or sorry, I I change my ancestry to human. Mm -hmm. Because we're gonna walk through this. And I'm gonna pick intelligence and let's say dexterity looks really good. Um, and that's me. And then background. Um, are you gonna go with the generic backgrounds? For right now, that makes everything easier on all of us. Okay. So let's say I'll be a, a field medic. It sounds handy for as far as um you know, some wisdom doctor. Um, then my free ability boosts, we're going to go a little strength, more intelligence, uh, maybe a little charisma and some more dexterity. And that's that done. And then um, we go into ancestry feet. Which feet am I looking at here? Let me share my screen so you can talk me through this as your sort of El Guinea Pig 010. Are you seeing this? Now that's strange. Oh, we've lost him. We've lost him. <laughs> we lost the Zoom call. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We'll be right back. The Zoom call dropped. Your internet phone. Uh, I don't know. You have to ask her. Okay. And we're back. There they are. Oh. Yeah, it's all right. A little bit of a technical glitch, but we kept it going. So. But like. No, still terrible, shitty technical glitches. You're going to have them have as half races. Uh, tell me my internet's unstable. We're noticing on this end. Internet or? I, I rarely have internet problems, but both Corey and I just lost our internet and he's in my house. So it's yeah, I here. Know. It's here. Lucky us. Anyway, I had to pause the stream, so one second here while we get the shit back going again. All our clever banter lost. <laughs> Makes me sad. Okay, we'll try this again here, coming back in. And we're back and trying, swinging again. <laughs> Technical difficulty is very important. So sorry. So I'm sharing my screen with Jared, the master, and the others, and the rules layers, and the world. And we're changing the gnome to a half elf, but that's what you need to go half gnome in the core book with some tweaking and feats so that I can end up being Jared's homebrew, stone blooded. So here I am. You guys are saying I just need to take a feat. So what kind of feat am I taking here? Am I taking an ancestry feat, a general feat, a skill feat, a class feat? What makes me from half elf to, or from human to half elf? Ancestry. Okay, so ancestry feat. And I've got adaptive cantrip, cooperative nature. Oh, this is the down below. There it is. Hang on. So we want to go into half elf. There we go. Be right back. Yep. Half elf and lore, nimble elf, unconventional. Isn't there something that just says I'm an elf? I'm an yeah, elf. Yeah, but an elf. maybe that's all the heritage feats, not the actual ancestry. The actual ancestry for half elf isn't there. You have to take human. Right, um, but I thought you could. And then apparently there was. Oh, a they feat. haven't put that in here yet, have they? Well, they have. We, like we made a half elf out of Corey two weeks ago. How'd we do that? Let me pull up. Um... Right. 
we went ancestry right. and like oh look ancestry can you guys see this yeah Let's we can share. see it go okay. yeah human so i'm a human yay you know and a human wants to be um two i want you to be want smart it. and fast so thank yes. you okay so that's me done okay now i'm a human how so do i get then you go down to um the feet yeah ancestry. yeah your ancestry feet so uh, you have uh, access to the gnome and human feet. okay so i take so gnome and, okay gnome familiarity gnome obsession a burrow ecologist I can talk all the ground creatures. Oh yes, I want to talk to the animals, definitely. Doctor Quaglittle. Okay, so I'm a burrow something, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, and that's it. Now I'm the the half gnome, as it were. Basically, I'm a, I'm a human, and I'm stone blooded. And any general and skill and class feats that I've taken for my alchemist are should... all still should remain yes you should oh. be good with that okay so rinse and repeat how about you joe <laughs> i will try that share your screen <laughs> with the rest of the class and uh, uh maybe <laughs> <laughs> but once you get rid of yours sure i might be able to do that all oh, right sorry i'll stop oh uh, just give me one second here. Let me, uh, I got to change something so that they're, everyone's looking at you and not looking at me. Uh, display capture. Okay. So I need to switch this over to a different screen. Right. Okay. Share your screen, sir. Show us the magic. Uh, I will in a sec. Once I enlarge and everything. And we'll have Jared talk you through it. Sure. All right, Jared. Sure. Sure. Right. Here we go. Okay. Here I am. I am a goblin. Yeah. So. Want me to change that to what? We're just going to make that human since they don't have half elf as a thing yet. Um, I could go in and actually make one eventually if they don't. But uh, that is the beautiful thing about Fantasy Grounds is if it's not there, it's very simple to build it yourself okay so if you click on tracker would be the easiest way to deal this and then go to ancestry <laughs> Why and do I did you not open your library yes i did it's all open See? interesting Oh, uh, you might have to scroll down to the actual book because that says all. So see if that'll drop that drop down on group. It will pull the actual Pathfinder second edition core rule book. There you go. <laughs> and we still got nothing. All right. Uh, I got one for you. Go back into your library. All right. See all the things up above. Activate them all. Click make all kinds of buttons. Just click all. Yep. Careful. Glad to see you guys can see that. I can't because At the top. It zooms in my way. <laughs> top right of that board. Yeah, there you go. I, the problem you is got it. zoom is in my way. I can't see it. Now I can. <laughs> all right. That was all. Attempt right. three. All right. Close that down. Close all down right. ancestries. All right. And then go to Ancestries on your right, on your list of all the kind of stuff. No, not there. Down there. You, yeah. said, you said right. Yeah, and you're right. Down there. <laughs> I didn't see the cursor go down there. It just suddenly <laughs> appeared, so I thought you'd click the wrong button. Uh, all right, uh, go to uh, somebody else. Why yeah, oh, wow, okay. Uh, Corey, half-elf, and now you're half-elf. Oh. Moving on. <laughs> so we could do this. Oh, oh, look at that. Hey, hey. Go to your... Actually, when I did it, it looked quite simple. Um, if we share my screen, right? When I clicked on uh, just over here on the right, click on Ancestries, and obviously mine showed up. All I'm getting is your internet's unstable. <laughs> oh, well, isn't that interesting? 
Well, when I clicked on, now I'm getting the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so my full ancestry list picked up. And I believe that when I did this, what does it say in my tracker? Let's have a look. Try again with the screen share. Stop the share. Restart your share. And you need to pick a different screen. Oh, do I need to get this over here? Yeah, so you stop your screen share. When you start, it should give you an option of two little pictures. One will be each screen. So you need to pick the other screen. Oh, sorry. My bad. There we go. Do we have the right one now? Yes. There you go. Okay, perfect. So the way it should have worked is over here. You click Ancestries. And I started out with an elf or sorry, with a human. And then in the tracker, let me look and see what it said. Oh, look at this, and I don't remember what I did. How terrible is that? Abilities. Oh, I should be under rules and, and abilities. Um, is where I was able to take out the half elf, the half orc, the whatever other half choices I got, and I was able to remove the ones to become a half elf. That left me with the ability to pick features or feats from both human and elf. I think, I'm trying to remember, it's been a while. P1, treat. Oh, that was the druid. Well, this was abilities, right? I'm doing a poor job of explaining this. <laughs> <laughs> it is all right, sir. Uh, I do not remember, but I do know that under the and rules and abilities here, it uh, it added in um, human, half elf, half orc, and I simply deleted out the ones that I did not want, which then it gave me the option to draw abilities and feats from both the human and elf categories. So instead of picking half elf, could I pull human and gnome in here and then it'll all double down, but then I could delete a bunch of stuff and just kind of. No, because basically you can still keep the half elf because as I was looking at it, all half races basically have the same stuff. So low light vision, um, that all would actually stay the same. It would just be up in ancestry, the name under your ancestry. Um, and you have access to all the feats. It's okay. Well, I just, I just did what Corey said. I deleted all the half orc and all that other unnecessary right, crap. Right. And okay. Awesome. So we'll it's actually ahead. really, really simple. I know when we built the characters a few weeks ago, I was expecting it to be far more complicated than it was. And then you just have to manually add the features from your half race. Yeah, basically. But like I like said, I had to add low light vision to the elf. It didn't come up naturally. I had to physically add it. The half elf get low light vision? Yeah. Yes. They can't have dark vision, but after no. you get low light vision. It's one of the traits that I don't think is actually in the tra traits section okay. yet. Um, so, it comes under it comes under feet. So for Joe, it said half orc to get the goblin ancestry. Ancestry. He should change his ancestry to half orc, and then pull in some gnome stuff. Hmm. Like a level one gnome, or sorry, goblin trait. Gob, sorry, goblin back. Yeah. Goblin trait. Well, he already has goblin stuff, so he doesn't have to re-pull that in because it's his original character with original goblin stuff. Then. He Need to, all it means now is that he can draw from the human tree as well. 
and he's no longer small he's considered medium which doesn't really affect too much in the mechanics of the game yet no but he could take out goblin ancestry and bring in half elf so you following that joe i am following that just i can't do it on my character sheet but i am following that let me see if i it's and you have to remember that goblins are medium sized though they're not small and goblins are already medium sized in, in second edition. Really? Yep. Yeah. What about halflings? So, halflings are still small. They're half human. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Who's 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 making noises? Beat up if you're gonna fiddle. You. Yeah, you. You. Almost the GM. I can see you. <laughs> that he's, he's, po- he's pointing because he won't cue up the mic. <laughs> So it's like all the audience sees is me talking to myself. Ha ha, I'm on to you, Hammond. He's just pointing. Anyway. All right. So, so Jared, um, possibly the audience has grasped what we're talking about. Possibly not, but moving on. Um, I'll get you to clear the chat, Jared, because you're in control. Just right-click in the chat window and get rid of all that gobbledygook. You're killing me with the static noise, guys, really. <laughs> static <laughs> noise. On? Something going on here. It's a secret. Something's we cannot on. tell you. I don't think I'm t- having anything tap against the mic. Any- anyway, Jared. Yeah. Welcome to your world. Do you have a name for this yes. world for Pen-, Pen and Dragon Games? Yes, Can I you tell us what have... Pen and Dragon Games is? So, Pen and Dragon Games is an idea that... I wanted to create my own world that had decent history, had mechanics that fit it and not just um, the standard, well, you know, go play in our sandbox. I wanted to make my own sandbox. And it has slowly evolved into, well, I want to share everything um, and try to make a living out of this. So this is the first step towards that. So, we are in the world of Rutram. That is what everybody here is going to call it. That's, at least in this continent, that's what everybody's going to call it. Um, You are in the isolated, thought to be, last safe haven of Hope's Retreat. And to get into the history of it, the short version is basically um, a group of explorers brought everybody into this gully or valley in the nestled in between all of these mountains and caused a landslide to fill in the way out. And they have been here for 600 years. During that time, magic completely fell, fled the world. And over the past 100 years, it has come back, leading to new revelations and the reintroduction of magic into the system and classes um, of this social structure here. So you're kind of, we're kind of like in an El Dorado sealed valley as opposed to like Ember, the underground city of falloutness. Correct. Okay. Um, And because of their very um, isolated views, one of the first things that the founders did was basically get really angry at the gods and didn't really found their own religion, but completely tore away from it. Um, This is a place of ancestry worship. Uh, Your ancestors are basically everything. So if your lot in life is the street urchin, that falls on your ancestor's fault. Um, If you're making great money as a merchant, that's all thanks to your ancestors. Um, this is a feudal ancestry um, system that has just entered a Renaissance era, and it has brought with it all of the rough and tumble um, problems that comes with a change in beliefs and views now that magic's involved. And that is kind of where we are stepping into uh, this world is there's overpopulation, there's overcrowding. The water supply is dwindling. Weather has not been what it used to be. 
and riots have started to happen in the streets. People are not getting are not getting what they want, what they think they deserve, and so we have unrest and unease. And the powers that be, which are three councils, each have their own view on how to fix things. And none of them are really getting along with each other. So that's kind of the, the backdrop of, of- What are the councils? The, uh, that's going on. So we have three councils. We have the Council of Wisdom, and they are, as much as they like to pretend, they know best. They're actually what you would consider the noble class of this society. They're all, uh, they're seven families. They've all been in power. They've all had a seat at the table of the Council of Wisdom. It's normally held by the eldest of that family, no matter if it's uh, male or female, but it is the eldest. You can't get into that council. You can be part of the council, but to actually hold power and sway, you have to be of the blood. Um, and they look at everything in a very narrow glass. Uh, they also are the keepers of some of the, what are considered um, relics. And they don't want anybody to know that what is actually there. Everybody knows they have these relics, but they don't know what it is um, of the past. Then you have the council of knowledge. And this came about within the past 300 years when alchemy really started getting a foothold and the, uh, the writers of history kind of needed a place to go, well, this is really what happened. And so they formed a council of their own. Uh, it is, would be considered kind of a, a college -y um, kind of setup. You have a lot of deans, a lot of professors, and then you have one headmaster. Um, but they all have a say. There is a very, even though it's structured, there is room to grow. You can, you can become the, a dean. You can become a professor. Um, it's just a, you have to prove that you have the knowledge. And then you have the adventurers circle, or what was the um, those of the younger and hot-headed, the, the young and the bold. Uh, the council was made up of, the, of youths uh, who had become the peak of their profession. So soldiers, um, archers, hunters, gatherers. It's more of a uh, rough and tumble kind of, you know, you want my position, so you have to challenge me for it. Um, and they and the academy or the circle of knowledge have kind of started causing waves because they want to change. Um, the council of knowledge has decided to um, break apart into the council of knowledge and the mages academy, since now magic is a big thing and none of the other councils really are excited about. And so just as the Council of Wisdom is about ready to put their foot down, one of its founding families has a internal coup. And the fourth son of the Todd family, going by the name of Grim Todd, goes from the fourth son to the prominent member of his family in the course of a year. And in that time, he has made bets and wages and has sent out more money into the surrounding populace than any other person in the past hundred years. And all to raise up this expeditionary force that you, the players, are now invited to. Uh, you've either picked up a flyer, went to one of the seminars that either him or one of his seconds has hosted talking about what they need to do to ensure the future of everybody here at Hope's Retreat. So 
So that's everything in a nutshell. Um, the basics of the basics. So that is where you're, you're, we're starting off is you all are. We're in a valley and uh, I've zoomed in on his map here, assuming that this is said valley. So in a former mining town community that's sealed into a valley like El Dorado, we are the new expeditionary force gentlemen of Hope's Retreat dying to busting out. Now, I believe Jared said we're actually attached to one or more of the councils that, that back us, or we each represent the council. You can. You can represent members of the council, or you can represent the, um, the outside townships that really... That are just starting to make contact, that are... Um, well, I mean, we've obviously breached to the outside. I not mean, yet. Oh, not, not yet. Okay. That is what we're leading up to. Um, this is why the expeditionary force is being assembled, is he has spent the last year, um, Grim Todd has spent the last year funding a entire family of miners and uh, engineers to tunnel through one side of the mountain with transmuters and everything else. And so now he has basically gone in front of the, all the councils and said, this is what I'm doing. We need your support. And as that's happening, his followers are basically have gone around and gone, Hey, you want to come with us? We're, we're going out to the rest of the world. You know, do, do you want to stay as a peasant? Do you want, you know, your lot in life is no longer going to be dictated by your ancestors. You can dictate it. So he's, he's very much, a charismatic he's he's followed by charismatic leader uh, people who are also trying to pull basically the dregs of this society together to do something great um give us your tired your downtrodden yes exactly and basically the councils were like okay have everybody in our dungeons hmm. so as you're walking up to the outskirts of this city you can see the city walls uh out into the distance you come across this tent city of thousands who are just milling around and you can definitely without too much pomp and circumstance see three different types of individuals here you have the ones that are definitely coming from the circles they are in the nicer clothes. They may even still have their pins on them, you know, denoting what part of the circle they they represent. Um, then you have the people from the outskirts. They are definitely in like homespun clothing. They they have more they're w more well built, but they have a, a ragged appearance. But they they they've got this shine in their eyes, like there's hope around the corner. And then you've got what's making up most of this tent city. Men and women who are in these just bedraggled clothing that is barely holding on and holding together. Some of them look like they should not even be up and moving around. The dregs of society or what somebody decided needed to be put in prison. Um, and they're all walking around kind of like in in a daze, um, a lot of them. Some of them are standing up at tents, seeming to fill out some paperwork. And this is what you come across is, and you heard it from, from a mile away. The, just the sound and the cacophony that comes with this many bodies packed in an open place. And this is what you're walking into with like the flyer that said, come join us or with the, the personal, you know, request form from your circle um you know to go do this maybe you're you're been forced to go do this uh, you know you don't want to be there but here you are and now you're seeing this this just mass of confusion and chaos tent city right? and refugee camp right i like yes basically yeah. and in the middle of it is this huge almost like a circus tent in the center of it 
and around the outside you you're seeing you're noticing these guys these people for the first time these men and women they're all wearing the same uniform it's a, a a gray and black uh striped uniform very sometimes when they stop you kind of your eyes kind of just go over them the they're muted colors but they're all kind of wearing the same gear and garb and they seem to be directing people as they as people come up to them with questions what would you like to do so you're saying we're kind of in a mosh of a lineup that's funneling in towards these uh quasi yes. officials yes and how thick is the line like how how wide it's a trickle the it looks like they've already kind of got it under control their biggest problem seems to be the thousands and thousands of inmates that have been flooded into the plane oh, okay uh, that they're now dealing with but you can still see a lot of these like i said they if you had to put a word to them, they almost act like uh, these legendary soldiers. They have this air about them. They're, um, soldiering has kind of not been a thing for okay. 600 years, but everybody has stories about it. I never um, get to play. Dying to roll some dice. Can we all just pick up a dice, like a d20, and you know, highest goes first, and we'll just go through the, the line here? Yeah, go ahead. Ten. In the middle. Fifteen. That's a D twelve, Corey. <laughs> you're, you're hamstring yourself. He doesn't really he does not want to That's be right. it didn't make much difference on I got a seven. Ooh. I guess I go last. One. <laughs> <laughs> oh. right. So silt. Well, taking in the picture, this is obviously not what we expected to find. Like, I'm, I'm sure that we were expecting a little more order than this chaos in front of us. Um, I'm going to take a quick look around me. And, what what uh, do you look like, Charming? Oh, you uh, very. I, I forgot. Let me click over to my description. There we go. Uh, about six feet tall. Um, even though I do have the uh, more soft features of an elf, like, we don't hide the fact that we're all half something. I'm still more to the human side than the elven. Uh, dark hair. I've got really ratty looking leather armor, some secondhand weapons, uh, beat up traveler's backpack. And that's what all I've got to my name right now. So definitely a t uh, uh, an outside townsman. Yes. You're, you're um, coming from the rural area of Pope's Retreat. Yes. And, okay, uh, um, that brings us to Dr. Quack. It's Quack. Quack. Quick. Dr. Quack. Quick. Quack. It's an official Pathfinder 2nd Edition name. So I've just popped up uh, an image here for the audience, and mm. this is my original character, a gnome alchemist. So stretch him out. You know, he has a very um, the image, yeah. Mediterranean, you know, he's got the olive brown skin. He's got sharp, dark eyes, and he has that black Fabio thick hair. It's cut short, but it has that greasy look into it. Uh, the Mediterranean, he has thick eyebrows. Uh, like I said, being human, mostly, right? But with the gnome ancestry, the fact that my forehead is wider, the eyes are a little wider, the eyebrows flare a bit. There's, I wouldn't say points in the ears, but there's that cusp look, you know. Um, and... Very Fingers, very nimble. Fingers. <laughs> very nimble fingers, right? And let's see now if the if the original voice was like this when I'm three feet tall. I think the uh, the new voice, since well, I'm Swamador. mostly human, would be I'm I'm Doctor Quack. Excuse me. Coming to finally waiting my turn. Coming to the front. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sort of medical facility that I might help with here? You seem in dire need of, well, and I'll help you can get, uh, attend a hospital at uh, triage. I am a doctor, you see. A surgeon, actually. The uh, the man in, in Dev, now that you're close to him, he he's wearing like a, a 
black, a, a muddled black, gray, and green trench coat over top of some leather chest plate and carrying a spear and short sword at his hip. He, he turns to you, gives a slight nod, and he goes, I, I appreciate your, your thought and your willingness to help, but all people who are interested in joining this expedition uh, must sign in first. Uh, are you with any of the organizations or are you here on your own f- volition? Uh, he le- I lean in and uh, place a finger along the nose. You know, as a academic, I'm sure you could appreciate someone that comes or represents the council of Help me out here, Jared. A doctor. Knowledge. <laughs> Knowledge. The, the Knowledge. Scholar Council, what did you call it? Yes. Yeah, the Council of Scholars. Oh, very good. Um, well, we're going to need all of you to uh, consider this like an orientation day. I believe you guys do an orientation. So consider this an orientation day. You see that giant tent in the center of this mess. Uh, we're pushing everybody who has any type of skill and looks capable to head there. Um, everything will be explained and you will get your uh, orders and uh, requests from from that tent. So, so if you would head that direction, it would be greatly appreciated. One, one last thing, my good man. Um, the name of someone in charge, not that I would ever be so prudent as to just try to cut the line, but... You know, knowing the man from the man, if you catch my drift, a um, little information, if you please. Anyway, slip him some uh, low currency. What do we got for money in this world? Uh, it is done just like anything else. It's it's silver and gold primarily. Okay. okay. Um, well, I'm down. Have, my last coppers, you know, it's he's just the guy. Um, going, you yeah. would have then probably a handful of silver. The so Walmart. Yeah. The, the Walmart greeter does not get silver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hand him a silver like I want change for this information, depending on how crappy or good. So I would then like a um, diplomacy. I, I'm trying to find the one I actually. I'm not like. lying, and I'm not trying yeah, to bolster him with intimidate. Um, so yeah, let's give it. Let's do a give it the schmooze. Give me a diplomacy. Wow. Let's find out. Twenty-one. Ooh. Well. So he he definitely takes your your coins and quickly almost faster than you can think puts it like in a, a breast pocket. Um Sir Grimm himself is going to be overseeing this, but his second is also there. And her name is Oh, got to write this down. Idril. Sorry? Uh, Idril. I will give you this oh. I'm, just, I'm just adjusting some cash on my sheet here if you go to notes there is a idril and it has just the most common basic knowledge that you can pull up on some of the characters that you have access to right now and right now for you that's idril um okay sorry one second i just some quick finance switching. I had some. I had six coppers. I'm down to four. Um, right. No, down to two. Sorry, that was what's left of my gear. Ah, tried to get this right. Okay. Just try to be fair here. Um, yep. Sorry, what are we clicking on to pull up this? Notes. If you go to notes, if yep. you've got your note tab, there's Ooh. a note section. I Idril, Grim second and strongly Elvin. Yes. I just learned who the boss was. Whoops. Sorry. Is there a way to like? That's fine. Just throw... Most of that is common. That's most of that's common information in there, anyhow. Oh, okay, but no, a... God, it's, there's it's no been... image or no, not yet. Um, okay. Think, like I said, definitely beautiful, definitely elven, almost seven feet tall. Oh wow! Okay, uh, I'm making notes of this <laughs> in a special post note on my computer to be the campaign guide. But... Half giraffe. That's cool. So, uh, from a fantasy grounds standpoint, because we are also, you know, plugging the system, how did you do that? How did you just make a note? And so, just it? like almost anything else, you can go in. Uh, so, notes, even even players can put in their own notes, um, mm-hmm. and you right click, and you create new or create item, and these notes can just be about be anything. They can deal with 
um, a quest, a item, a personal log, they're, they're there for multiple uses. Um, so if you don't want to have to pull up, like, let's say, an NPC just to pull up background information all the time, you can make a note of it. Um, I can even go in there and make ownership of said note um, and or just give certain people access to it by dropping it into your uh, character sheet. Okay, that's cool. So it, it, they're kind of like handouts. So you know how Pathfinder loves to have handouts in their um, uh, campaigns, mm -hmm. basic information. So you would um, be basically making notes or four of their handouts. That's what that's for. And I'm doing just that. It says I can make it public. So I have Rutram Contrad, Hidden Sealed Valley, Town of Hope's Rest, and it's public and I lock it. And there you go. But I, how do I yep. how do I put a title for the new note? How do I? Uh, you sh you should oh, be able to put it in. Okay, there we yeah. go. Um, what did you call the world? It, uh, Rutran. It's in the notes also. Oh, I thought that was the name of the. I thought that was the name of the continent. No, that's the world. Oh, the continent sorry. doesn't have a name as of yet. Right. Sorry. Because they haven't been outside of it. So why would you give a continent that you don't know the full extent? So everything is. Okay, done. Awesome. Very cool. Right. Yes. Off, off to the tent. Yes. Seeking the tall elven Ildril, what you said I may have heard of. Yes, you definitely, if you're from the, the city, that name would have come up a few times. Awesome. I take long strides. I'm enjoying my human heritage. With the yes. Heritage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look at me go. So, Mefrit. Your turn, sir. I'm going to take a quick look around and see what I see from underneath my cloak. Lots of chaos. Lots and lots of chaos. Um, there's a lot going on. Uh, like I said, there's one thing you do notice since you're taking the time to look is that almost anybody who seems to be really sporting one of the circles insignias one of the council's insignias is being stopped by one of these men in black and gray um uniforms they're being asked politely to remove them and to keep them hidden or when they refuse you see some of the swiftest police action you've probably ever seen these guys are very well trained apparently as they basically take control of one rowdy individual who's basically screaming, but I have the right. I am a second son of one of the houses of the council of wisdom. You can't do this. And they're basically just like, yeah, uh-huh. And quickly just removing the, basically the artifacts or the, the insignia of, the, of, of these orders. They are definitely trying to make a very neutral, uh, area that no one is above anybody else here. So they're not arresting nobility. They're just like, you're all the same you here. Your, your social caste doesn't really count. Exactly. Okay. Does anybody appear or is there a main direction that everybody seems to end up going in? Anybody who isn't basically looking like they're fresh out of prison seems to be heading to the center where this like i said giant tent something kind of like old school carnival um just humongous in the center you you can't miss it i think i'm going to slowly make my way through the crowd towards the entrance of the tent while attempting to listen in on any conversation on my way there Okay, make a uh, perception check, focusing on your hearing, if you get bonuses to that. Well, there's I will, 16 one, plus 6. The guards me. are kind of seem to be extremely cautious right now. They keep talking about how uh, he's caught another one. He's caught another one, and he's already given them one warning. What do you think the boss is going to do this time? 
it's it's kind of like the hush conversation that seems to be happening when only more than two of these um, soldiers, for lack of a better term right now, uh, seem to get together recently. I think I will just continue to make my way towards the tent and uh, sort of slip in and sort of stay at the back of everything as okay. to almost not be noticed. That brings us to uh, our friendly neighborhood goblin blood. Yay. Last. <laughs> once again. You got this, buddy. <laughs> yeah, once again, last. But yes, using the new goblin heritage slash human, this is going to be interesting. So Hawk is now going to you know, five feet tall. Actually has a little bit of hair spreading above his big green ears. Wearing uh, dusty leather armor, but does still have even though I know you stated in your world that the way of the gods has been forsaken-ish type thing, he still worships in his own little way. That's not uncommon yeah. in this world, especially if you're coming from one of the uh, outer towns. Religion has kind of cropped up there in their, its own little quiet kind of don't get caught kind of way. But yeah, so instead of having the typical holy symbol and everything brandished everywhere that majority of champions like to do, you know, look at me, look at my god. This is a little bit more subtle. Uh, some, you know, backwards type painting on the buckler. <laughs> Looks like it was done by like a two-year-old. So yeah, that's his basic appearance now. So. But with that, uh, I will talk to a guard or somebody who looks like a guard. Asking pretty much which way to go for a new recruit to join. Ho oh, there, green blood. Your cons welcome here. Don't think that we won't back you just as we back any of our brothers. You are free and clear to be here. If anybody gives you any kind of lip, just hunt down one of my companions and I, and we'll set things straight. How can I help you this morning? Well, man meat, I wish to join the festivities. Ah, very good. Um, you definitely look like you're capable, so Head on towards that giant tent there in the center. Can't miss it. Everybody who's capable and able is going to be there for the, uh, well, for the introductions. Fair enough. I got some awesome small crowd and medieval town ambience going on for you here, Jared, through Tabletop Audio. Tabletopaudio.com. It's free. It's awesome. And we like to use it. Unfortunately, these guys can't hear it. Just you and me and OB OBS. So we're all inside the so, tent? So you're all inside the tent. And the first thing you notice is this tent, unlike outside, is very organized. There, there is a, a, it's partitioned with some very heavy duty cloth all around. One of the first things, if you all want to make a perception check for me, Twenty-two, Jared. Yeah. Sixteen. Twenty-one. For the caramel secret. Very good. So those of you who got twenty and above, we're still waiting for Ark. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a scripting error. Oh. Ooh. Uh, can you just roll a raw d twenty? <laughs> And add your, what's your perception? Uh, do, 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 plus two. Okay. 
So for those of you who are really looking around, kind of like your almost like a kid in a candy store, uh, Dr. Quack, you see one of the most impressive chemistry setups in the front of this tent that you have ever seen. It's got all the beakers and gadgets you could possibly think of. And some even some devices you don't even know. Um, oh and along, my. <laughs> along with the wall is the largest collection of books you have ever seen. Goody. Whoever is in charge of this, it looks like the stories do not quite equate to the man himself. I have um, two. I have two words for you: B line. Yeah. <laughs> I go right And there. right before you get there, a very tall, elegant woman basically steps out of one of the partitions in this tent and says, Ah, good day, sir. How can I help you? Tall, elven, familiar? Yes. Lore check? Please. Uh, I have warfare and underworld lore. Actually, how did, how, did, how did I get underworld lore from field? Uh, sorry, it underworld lore would definitely get you something. All right, twenty six. Oh, well, you know, Idriel has a moniker, and it's the Bloody Gutter. She is well known in the circles that really do matter in the city. If you really need somebody to be dealt with, you go to Idrisil because she was once an inquisitor for the circle of wisdom. So she knows how to get information and she knows how to do it the right way. So when you say with, when you say deal with someone, she can get dirt on somebody or this is somebody who knows how to get rid of the body. Both. She is a master at information gathering and making the body disappear. Oh. Well, hello and well met. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Quack. Bit of a bow. Am I having the current pleasure of dressing the famous, and he leans in a bit with a bit of a wink, and partially infamous Ingerson? Make a diplomacy check. You're smoozing her. Well, it is my way. You, one catches more flies with honey than vinegar, I suppose. One. <laughs> I guess this is a tired thing that everybody tries. And <laughs> Darling, I've heard it all, but thank you. Uh, if you'd please don't go near this, the, the, the chemistry set without Grimm's permission. He gets a little upset and i wouldn't push his buttons today but if you ask nicely after your force first task is complete i bet he'd be willing to let you use it later no no i'd be the last person to touch another man's beaker you you have me all wrong my lady uh thank you for the warning perhaps the books <laughs> head over there okay not, yeah not, Hey, the infamous Ingersoll said, "Yeah, I don't want to okay. do that." So I don't want to. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Off I go. All right. Who? What else is everybody else doing? Is there any uh, obvious order here that like somebody we should be approaching? Somebody with a clipboard, a group of people filling out papers that I can find out where I go get mine. Yes, there is. Um, that would be the second most important thing that you've noticed is there's a table along the right side. It's got your usual cadre of um, individuals with paperwork and check sheets. And you're, you're noticing that you and a sparse few others seem to be the last ones in because they're all kind of like looking over your general direction. You definitely saw somebody tracking somebody across the uh, so other 250 people in here. Um, because but, we all hung to the back, I kind of look around me. I'm, I'm guessing I'm surrounded by Auk and Mayford at this point. Yes. I turn to the two of them and say, boys, 
I think we need to uh, belly up to the table here before things start happening. Head over that way. Okay. Sounds good. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, welcome again. Thank you. Anyone? Oh, master. <laughs> the master. I lost you there, Jared. <laughs> oh, really? Again? Okay. But I do take time to snap my fingers and, and kind of motion towards Quek because he was the last one at the back, even though he took off that pile of books. I'll have uh, some wow. sort of, some sort of, you know, and Jared's internet's gone and... Oh, I think back. I'm back. It seems to happen quite frequently. Yeah, he's, I think it's stable for the next 20 minutes. He's, he's back. He's back. He's back. All right. And he's gone again. So with most of us in line. Yes. Um, oh, he's back. I think so. Yeah. I'm just trying to fill it in for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep, yeah. No. So you're this table's there. You're, you're they hand you basically a little booklet and it says, uh, Grimm's Ravens on it, and it's stylized, and it basically looks like a flock of birds are on the front of this thing flying away um, over across the horizon. And underneath of it, it says the Irregulars Handbook. And this, like I said, everybody seems to be really nice and very well put together. Everybody at least you've met so far. Um, they seem to be really excited and, you know, but you're definitely noticing that there's something different in this tent. Um, there's a lot more professionalism. There isn't any of the people in uh, ragged clothing, uh, people who need help. These, these people, they may look a little bit bedraggled, but there's quite a few of them here. You bet your last coin you wouldn't want to get into a fight with. So you t I'm guessing you take the, the booklets and... Find yourself a seat. Do I manage to get uh, Doctor Quest's attention? I are you going to do something very obvious? Just like this, because he took off over that way. Everybody's yeah. going this way. I'm like, you really should. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, uh, Doctor Quack, uh, you want to make another perception check to see if you notice someone jumping up and down and waving their hands at you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the wave. Come on. We're here. Okay. Did you forget to take your medicine this morning? <laughs> One, six. I'm alone. Oh. I'm in line. I talked to the man in gray. I learned about the darling Ingrisil. I almost touched it on the man's beaker, and now I'm completely absorbed in books. So, sorry, no. Oh, not with a, not with no, a six. <laughs> you found a very interesting book, right? Yeah. Like, it just called your name. It's, it's fine as in gold. You can't read any of it very How to well. speak with your hand, sign language, and other and, symbols, right? Ooh, very and, <laughs> and one thing you notice, though, because you're just kind of... Someone has spilt a lot of blood over a bunch of these books. There is blood splatter on some of these that you're... Oh, is it fresh? To... Oh. Hmm. Perception check. Uh, medicine check, maybe? Can I cheat? You can do more. If you, medicine, yeah, you can do medicine also. I'm just, I'm, I might, I know the DC might be higher or lower or, or something, but uh, right, I, um, I forget you have medicine. Yeah, but they're both the same. Sorry, <laughs> I thought maybe my medicine would be better. Sure. Damn, twenty-five. Right. So you're Damn. realizing some of these books now that you're kind of going down the line. Maybe about a dozen of them are have a little tacky blood on them still. Oh, like freshly acquired knowledge. Yes, that is definitely what it's looking like. Because if you make a lore check, I might be able to tell you more. Whoa, so exciting. Underworld lore? Uh, How did I actually, know? <laughs> that, that could work. That might get you. That's a little bit higher, but 13. no. But these bindings look immaculate. They're definitely embossed in gold. And is that 
official pig leather? Is that official pig leather? Oh, pigs are rare? Very. Um, the most common animal of burden would be what you could consider, those of you with older Dungeons and Dragons knowledge, a dire bull. Wow. No chickens, cows. That the most of the animals here are larger than they should be. Hmm. So no. So pork. a chicken. The chickens would be like chest high. Mm. Oh, sure. damn. Uh, but no, their horses are like things that you read about in books, and the thing that you have are mostly goats and uh, basically steer. What about dogs, cows, beef? No one's seen a dog in over 400 years. Um, I guess I should have asked before I started the dogs barking app, but okay, sorry. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> How about dragons? Explosions. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. just dying to push buttons Go over ahead. here. Okay. All right. No, sorry. Anybody okay. else? Anybody else? All right. I think we're waiting intently for the next uh, turn of events. Okay, I so... think before we leave the table, I'm going to scoop another book for the fine Dr. Quack. Yeah. Okay. My, my representation precedes me. I have not. I don't know anyone. They all know me, <laughs> apparently. I'll turn around and, oh, I have brought minions. Uh, you, you've got uh, my book. We, we, all, we, all, we all did the stand at the back thing. Like We all did the same thing. So when the group went that way, we were still standing there, so we kind of singled ourselves out. And then you uh, took off. <laughs> I, I thought I was going alone. Like I figured eventually there would be, like I said, that clipboard or whatever. Yeah. But the DM put a big, shiny alchemist carrot. Come I on, know. guys. You know, I know. You know. We don't know each other. Do I know no. you? So, yeah. well, maybe I'm not grabbing an extra book for the, for the lovely doctor. But I like to have extra things. So I'm going to scoop an extra book. Very good. They don't seem to be. They don't care, really. They're like, go ahead. Go ahead. Would you, would you like some, you know, the, the official... Uh, handbag for today? Absolutely. It's like a swag table. <laughs> He's just going down. <laughs> oh, look at the handbag. Like... Look at those little tote bags and the. That's awesome. Well, they hand you a, a belt of pouches. Nice. Very nice. Um, it's got the symbol that you're seeing kind of plastered everywhere now. Like I said, the flock of birds seeming to be flying out over the horizon. And a. If you thought the. A uh, woman was impressive. Someone about her same height walks through the uh, partition to the rest of the tent. A uh, big dude, almost like th this guy must have had some troll blood in, in his ancestry because he is stacked like a brick house. Um, he's got his hair is completely shaved off he's got kind of a slight green gray tinge to his skin and when he comes out all this all the other people stand up the people in uniforms kind of stand up which kind of seems to indicate that something's happening and right as he you think that this is the guy he steps aside and a very i won't say well dressed but he's very well put together man kind of almost swaggers out his armor is definitely used he's definitely got a few battle scars on him uh gray at the temples um but he's got that look like yeah i killed a few people in in, in my daily life and i don't have a problem with it but at the same time he's kind of got this like just charismatic air about it um, his hair is definitely cut, not completely short, but it is shorter than what you are normally used to seeing the, uh, any of the councilmen's, uh, from the council of wisdom. Um, and he kind of looks around and stands up and he, he's like, all right, all right. Now that I've got some unpleasant business to deal with, I think I'm going to have to move this forward. Welcome. Welcome. You all have an important decision to make today. Uh, you have all been directed here by one of my scouts uh, as you entered the place. You might not have realized it, but they had a job to do. They were looking for people who looked like they could be helpful 
in our endeavors. So you have a choice to make today and through the rest of the upcoming week, whether or not you're going to be an irregular, one of my irregulars. Now, you're going to ask yourself, what does that mean? And the truth is, not much yet. But it does mean that you'll have my backing. Get into trouble with one of the other circles, and I'll be there to back you, so long as you haven't done something completely heinous. Um, it also means that when you go out and do jobs, anything that you, you know, get your hands on, uh, find, do, or, you know, part of that comes back to the organization. Ah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm Grim Todd, first of my name, and uh, if I'm lucky, last of my line. But Excuse me, Mr. What? Todd, I have a question. Yes. Yeah, and I'll um, be that guy, like totally interrupt him in his speech <laughs> inappropriately. I'm sorry, but he would. You, sir, um... Am I to assume that those inside this tent have been signaled out to begin, as shall we say, a new circle, a faction, or society outside the powers that be in Hope's Retreat? Possibly. It all depends on what we find on the outside world. Because, let's face it, you may not be from the circles, you might not be from the city, but I have visited almost every place in the past five years inside our lovely little sanctuary. And the further you get from the city, the worse the rumors and closer to the truth they become. If we find anything out there, you're going to want something between you and the councils from taking what you find and what we rightfully acquire. And that's going to be me and the men around you. And maybe even you one day. I start a that. cheer. Grim Todd, Grim Todd, Grim Todd. Right. <laughs> to back down, please. I've got to get through this because I've got... And you make a perception check. Okay. Oh, uh, you all can, because everybody's kind of quiet right now. So you would definitely. Twenty-six. Twenty-one. Grim Todd. Grim Todd. Well, Five. Ock is not doing well tonight. He's found the food. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, and we just took you all the way back. That's me, Jared. That's so <laughs> me. I know you listened to our beta test, and I stalled off at the food table in that inve in prime <laughs> investigation. That is so yeah. awesomely mean. <laughs> They've got tofu burgers, and you can't help yourself. Yummy. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Tofu? No? Anyway, no. Listen to our Lord's Ebony. So, oh my. you hear, I demand to be let go. I am a senior <laughs> member of one of the grandest houses, House Drakhand. You will let me go, Todd. Do you hear me? You will have... He holds up a finger. I'll be right back. And he just turns around, marches through the, the curtains again. Everybody else seems to be, like, looking around. And then you hear it. I'm only going to ask you this once. You will shut up, or you will. I will not shut up. You hear a bang, high-pitched, quick bang. And then the curtain kind of bows out a little bit, kind of like someone splashed a bucket of water against it. And then oh, he comes out, walks over to his station, takes a little brass thing from his hand and sits it down on his table. And he goes, I'm going to have to deal with this real quick because I, I don't like losing these. And he starts working the, the levers and pouring some substance in together and then works a press and turns around, looks at a little silver object with a, looks like a stone at the end of it. Pulls something out of where his a short sword would normally hang from somebody around here, or a rapier, pulls a device out, cracks it open, slots it back in, cracks it shut. You hear a spinning sound of metal. 
and then he puts it back in to a holster. And he turns around. He's got a little blood splatter on his, his cloak. And he goes, now, where were we? Yes, the problem. The problem right now, gentlemen, ladies, is that the powers that be have had 10 years to fix all of the problems that we've been having. But they, councils, can't agree on anything. Hell, my own father decided that the best course of action was to thin the herd. You know what I did to him? He's buried now. So is my brother and my older sister because they wouldn't help you. They wouldn't help the rest of us because we're dying. We're stagnating. We are starving ourselves to death. The aquifers under the city, they've got four years left in them and they're not refilling. That is the hard truth of it right now. The hard truth that we're all going to have to deal with. And they refuse to go outside of our sanctuary because the ancestors brought us here. The ancestors. I'm thankful for my ancestors, but will I let them kill me slowly as I contemplate eating my neighbor? No. So that is what brings us to today. This year, in fact. I've put together this expeditionary force. Force, not expeditionary group, force. Because I've read the histories. And if what we found in here the first hundred years that we tried to make this place livable is at all what's still out there, we're going to need people who can actually do a damn thing. So, are you an irregular? One of my ravens? Or are you qualified to reach the, the grander tier of sentinel? Will you be one of my sentinels? Or will you take this opportunity and maybe once we're outside, find your own way? But so long as you remember one thing, we get one share of anything you find and that you at least give one share to our Widows and Orphans Fund. You will have my backing. Any questions so far? Grim Todd, Grim Todd, Grim Todd. <laughs> oh. And on that note. Yeah. You want to call it? I think we'll call it. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, ladies and gentlemen. A small taste of how easy it is using the second edition Pathfinder core rule book to make your own story. Uh, a little twist outside the norm. I mean, Jared has co completely original story, but there's elements of, of familiarity. He hasn't gone too far outside the box with the races, and yet he's got his own names. We're a stone finder or whatever. I like it. I like this a lot. Not just because I get to like play, but <laughs> I'm really digging the tone of the world. And then instantly we're laid out with a new possible faction. Join me, run away. Um, you know, I wish I knew there was a gunshot coming and we had no idea what the gun was because I did find a gunshot noise <laughs> and it went off late. But uh, um, yeah, the way you described your thing, like I, I am totally down to explore more of, of Jarrett's world. But as the gentlemen were saying, we're out of time. I'd like to thank again our sponsor uh, at Hip Fantasy Grounds for making this possible with giving us the core rule books and everything for free and, the, and their, their backing. I'd like to thank Jared for joining us, giving us a little taste of his world and letting us show Anytime. you how easy it is. And we have other ideas, other things, other one shots slotted for our Sunday night show, as well as Rob Starfinder's game. But we are definitely coming back to Jared's world here at Pen and Dragon. You will see him again in the hot seat, hot chair. Gentlemen, am I wrong? No, you will definitely have to see, take that seat again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One guy backs me. Thanks. <laughs> oh, no, you're back. Everybody, come on now. Don't be like that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Where my mic's muted. I didn't. I was saying things. I was I had no idea. No idea. Obviously, some technical difficulties we have to iron, iron out. But we would like to thank you and join us again next week, where we will do more character jamming with Starfinder. You will see more of Jarrett's world and even more Pathfinder Second Edition, something even brand new, here at Simply Second Edition on Sunday night. Thanks everybody, and good night. Night all. Night. Good night. Till next time.